Hey, here we are at day number 364 in our reading calendar. Today we read Malachi 3, Isaiah 66, and Revelation 21. So let's turn to Malachi 3. In chapters 1 and 2 yesterday, we heard how skeptical and sassy the Israelites had become. This came out in the way Malachi has the people of Israel talk back to God. The first is like this. I have always loved you, says the Lord. But you retort, really, how have you loved us? Topics for such exchanges included offering sacrifices that don't show appropriate honor to God, breaking covenants of marriage through divorce, and not honoring God as the God of justice. Two more sassy exchanges happen in today's reading. Malachi 3 The Lord Almighty answers, I will send my messenger to prepare the way for me. Then the Lord you are looking for will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger you long to see will come and proclaim my covenant. Malachi speaks. But who will be able to endure the day when he comes? Who will be able to survive when he appears? He will be like strong soap, like a fire that refines metal. He will come to judge like one who refines and purifies silver. As a metal worker refines silver and gold, so the Lord's messenger will purify the priests, so that they will bring to the Lord the right kind of offerings. Then the sacrifices which the people of Judah and Jerusalem bring to the Lord will be pleasing to him, as they used to be in the past. The Lord Almighty says, I will appear among you to judge, and I will testify at once against those who practice magic, against adulterers, against those who give false testimony, those who cheat employees out of their wages, and those who take advantage of widows, orphans, and foreigners, against all who do not respect me. Heading The Payment of Tithes The Lord speaks, I am the Lord, and I do not change, and so the descendants of Jacob are not yet completely lost. You, like your ancestors before you, have turned away from my laws and have not kept them. Turn back to me, and I will turn to you. But you ask, What must we do to turn back to you? I ask you, is it right for a person to cheat God? Of course not, yet you are cheating me. How, you ask, in the matter of tithes and offerings? A curse is on all of you because the whole nation is cheating me. Bring the full amount of your tithes to the temple so that there will be plenty of food there. Put me to the test, and you will see that I will open the windows of heaven and pour out on you in abundance all kinds of good things. I will not let insects destroy your crops, and your grapevines will be loaded with grapes. Then the people of all nations will call you happy, because your land will be a good place to live. Heading God's Promise of Mercy You have said terrible things about me, says the Lord. But you ask, what have we said about you? You have said, it's useless to serve God. What's the use of doing what he says or of trying to show the Lord Almighty that we're sorry for what we have done? As we see it, proud people are the ones who are happy. Evil people not only prosper, but they test God's patience with their evil deeds and get away with it. Malachi speaks. Then the people who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard what they said. 
In his presence there was written down in a book a record of those who feared the Lord and respected him. The Lord Almighty says, They will be my people. On the day when I act, they will be my very own. I will be merciful to them as parents are merciful to the children who serve them. Once again, my people will see the difference between what happens to the righteous and to the wicked, to the person who serves me and the one who does not. Now let's turn to Isaiah 66. I highlight verse 17 from chapter 65 as it foreshadows what we will read in Revelation today and tomorrow. Verse 17 says, Look, I am creating new heavens and a new earth, and no one will even think about the old ones anymore. And I believe that these moving verses from that same chapter portray the torment of the lake of fire. And so I tell you that those who worship and obey me will have plenty to eat and drink, but you will be hungry and thirsty. They will be happy, but you will be disgraced. They will sing for joy, but you will cry with a broken heart. Isaiah 66 Heading, The Lord Judges the Nations The Lord says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house, then, could you build for me? What kind of place for me to live in? I myself created the whole universe. I am pleased with those who are humble and repentant, who fear me and obey me. The people do as they please. It's all the same to them whether they kill a bull as a sacrifice or sacrifice a human being whether they sacrifice a lamb or break a dog's neck, whether they present a grain offering or offer pig's blood, whether they offer incense or pray to an idol, they take pleasure in disgusting ways of worship. So I will bring disaster upon them, the very things they are afraid of, because no one answered when I called or listened when I spoke. They chose to disobey me and do evil. Isaiah speaks. Listen to what the Lord says, you that fear him and obey him. The Lord speaks. Because you are faithful to me, some of your own people hate you and will have nothing to do with you. They mock you and say, Let the Lord show his greatness and save you, so that we may see you rejoice. But they themselves will be disgraced. Listen, that loud noise in the city, that sound in the temple, is the sound of the Lord punishing his enemies. My holy city is like a woman who suddenly gives birth to a child without ever going into labor. Has anyone ever seen or heard of such a thing? Has a nation ever been born in a day? Zion will not have to suffer long before the nation is born. Do not think that I will bring my people to the point of birth and not let them be born. The Lord has spoken. Isaiah speaks. Rejoice with Jerusalem. Be glad for her, all you that love this city. Rejoice with her now, all you that have mourned for her. You will enjoy her prosperity like a child at its mother's breast. The Lord says, I will bring you lasting prosperity. The wealth of the nations will flow to you like a river that never goes dry. You will be like a child that is nursed by its mother, carried in her arms, and treated with love. I will comfort you in Jerusalem as a mother comforts her child. When you see this happen, you will be glad. 
it will make you strong and healthy. Then you will know that I, the Lord, help those who obey me, and I show my anger against my enemies. Isaiah speaks. The Lord will come with fire. He will ride on the wings of the storm to punish those he is angry with. By fire and sword he will punish all the people of the world whom he finds guilty, and many will be put to death. The Lord says, The end is near for those who purify themselves for pagan worship, who go in procession to sacred gardens, and who eat pork and mice and other disgusting foods. I know their thoughts and their deeds. I am coming to gather the people of all the nations. When they come together, they will see what my power can do, and will know that I am the one who punishes them. But I will spare some of them and send them to the nations and the distant lands that have not heard of my fame or seen my greatness and power, to Spain, Libya, and Lydia, with its skilled archers, and to Tubal and Greece. Among these nations they will proclaim my greatness. They will bring back all your people from the nations as a gift to me. They will bring them to my sacred hill in Jerusalem on horses, mules, and camels, and in chariots and wagons, just as the Israelites bring grain offerings to the temple in ritually clean containers. I will make some of them priests and Levites. Just as the new earth and the new heavens will endure by my power, so your descendants and your name will endure. On every new moon festival and every Sabbath, people of every nation will come to worship me here in Jerusalem, says the Lord. As they leave, they will see the dead bodies of those who have rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will never die, and the fire that burns them will never be put out. The sight of them will be disgusting to all people. Let's turn now to Revelation 21. In chapter 20, we read about the millennium or the thousand-year reign of Christ, the defeat and imprisonment of Satan, his brief release following the thousand years, and his eventual eternal judgment in the lake of fire. Death and the grave were also abolished in the lake of fire. Revelation 21 Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth disappeared, and the sea vanished. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared and ready like a bride dressed to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice speaking from the throne, Now God's home is with people. He will live with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more grief or crying or pain. The old things have disappeared. Then the one who sits on the throne said, And now I make all things new. He also said to me, Write this, because these words are true and can be trusted. And he said, It is done. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. To anyone who is thirsty I will give the right to drink from the spring of water of life without paying for it. Those who win the victory will receive this from me. I will be their God, and they will be my children. But cowards, traitors, perverts, murderers, the immoral, 
those who practice magic, those who worship idols, and all liars. The place for them is the lake burning with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came to me and said, Come, and I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. The Spirit took control of me, and the angel carried me to the top of a very high mountain. He showed me Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God and shining with the glory of God. The city shone like a precious stone, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels in charge of the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of the people of Israel. There were three gates on each side, three on the east, three on the south, three on the north, and three on the west. The city's wall was built on twelve foundation stones, on which were written the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who spoke to me had a gold measuring stick to measure the city, the gates, and its wall. The city was perfectly square, as wide as it was long. The angel measured the city with his measuring stick, It was fifteen hundred miles long, and was as wide and as high as it was long. The angel also measured the wall, and it was two hundred and sixteen feet high, according to the standard unit of measure which he was using. The wall was made of jasper, and the city itself was made of pure gold, as clear as glass. The foundation stones of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation stone was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh yellow quartz, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chalcedony, the eleventh turquoise, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each gate was made from a single pearl. The street of the city was of pure gold, transparent as glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city has no need of the sun or the moon to shine on it, because the glory of God shines on it, and the Lamb is its lamp. The peoples of the world will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their wealth into it. The gates of the city will stand open all day. They will never be closed, because there will be no night there. The greatness and the wealth of the nations will be brought into the city. But nothing that is impure will enter the city, nor any one who does shameful things or tells lies. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of the Living will enter the city. Let me start us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our awesome God, and we pray also to you, Lord Jesus, you who are the Lamb of God. We believe it is true what you said. You would not do all that you have done to give birth to a special people and not bring that birth to completion. In all three of these final readings, you make it clear that there will be those who are eternally cursed and those who are eternally blessed. Those who rebel against you and receive the horrific consequences and those who seek to obey you and receive unimaginably rich blessings. Lord, you know each one who belongs to you. 
O Lord, my listener and I long to be among the victorious ones. We surrender our lives to you. Make me and my listener ready to live with you forever. We look forward to that new life where you will wipe away all tears from our eyes, where there will be no more death, no grief, no crying, and no pain. Again we pray for those who are not ready for your victory, for your second coming, Lord Jesus. Lord, as you know, we are living at a time when the lies of Satan are believed and promoted all around us. We pray that you would deliver those we are praying for from placing their hope and trust in the wrong things.